The Johto gym leaders are bad. Really bad. The majority using Kanto Pokemon. Underleveled, unevolved, or have too few party members. I mean, Chuck only has two Pokemon for God's sake. Have some self-respect. Today we're going to go through them all and make some needed adjustments without going over the top. Some guidelines are to incorporate more Jota Pokemon and give their team more options to deal with their weaknesses. For example, giving Price a way to deal with fire types. Yeah, the trainer with two water types and a ground type has no options outside of normal moves for fire type Pokemon. Hope you enjoy and when you finish, if you liked it, feel free to subscribe. I'm on my way to 400 subs where we'll be having a Pokemon showdown versus viewers live stream. So let's start with Faulkner, the flying type gym leader, or rather the bird type gym leader. A strong start to the Johto gyms by using two Kanto birds that aren't even level 10. Seriously, a level 7 Pidgey is how you're going to open. Pidgey level 7 knows Tackle and Mudslap, followed by Pidgeotto level 9 knowing Tackle, Mudslap and Gust. No problem for Cyndaquil and Totodile, but poor, poor Chikorita. Since Faulkner is a bird type trainer, unfortunately it does feel like certain flying types like Hoppip and Zubat are off the table, so we'll have to make do with only bird Pokemon. We're also going to bump his team from 2 to 3 party members. First of all, Pidgey has to go. A few options spring to my mind to replace them. I think a good lead would be Hoot Hoot. It retains the normal flying type and serves as an ease into the gym leader battle, assuming the player has taken on Sprout Tower before this as the player will have fought several Hoot Hoots by this point. It'll be level 9 and have the moves of Tackle, Growl, Foresight and Mudslap. The first Pokemon of the first gym shouldn't have anything crazy and it's fairly standard in its moveset. Next up, I think we should throw a slight curveball at the player and I think Natu, a Psychic Flying type, does that quite nicely. Faulkner actually uses a Natu as well in the Pokemon Pocket Monsters manga, so I believe it fits his team very well. This will be the player's first time battling a Psychic type, Although it won't know any psychic moves, seriously, just look at its level up learn set. And it'll be level 9 as well with the moves Peck, Leer, Nightshade. Nightshade is reliable damage for anything that could resist Peck, such as Rocky, the Onyx you can get by trading with an NPC, which likely gets 3 or 4 hit at most by Nightshade. Now for the third and final Pokemon. I could happily stick with Pidgeotto, but I'd rather go for a Pokemon of similar strength that has a certain cool factor to it. For that, Farfetch fits the... Bill! Sorry. <laughs> At level 10, being Faulkner's ace, it'll have the moves Peck, Quick Attack, and Mud Slap. I've dipped into egg moves here with Quick Attack, and expect more of that as we go on. This moveset is fairly straightforward, and while I was tempted to let Farfetch equip the stick item to boost its crit rate, I feel poor Chikorita would not appreciate that. So here's Faulkner's lineup. Three Pokemon, with two being from Johto. A Psychic Flying type to add at least a smidgen of type diversity, and Farfetch gets to be a Gym Leader's Ace. The one and only time it'll ever get to be a top tier threat. Time for the second Gym Leader, Bugsy, which has three Pokemon. Feels more like one Pokemon with a level 14 Metapod with Tackle, String Shot and Harden, a level 14 Kakuna with Poison Sting, String Shot and Harden, and then the real threat of the team, a level 16 Scyther with Fury Cutter, Quick Attack and Leer. This always irked me. Were they scared of his team lineup being too strong if Metapod and Kakuna evolved? I mean, one of the gym trainers in his gym has a Beedrill, but the gym leader only gets a Kakuna? Something does not add up there. Personally, I'd love to give Bugsy a Ledian or Aridos, but they evolved too late to be used here. Unless, of course, we cheat, but I'd rather avoid doing that. And Ledibur and Spinarak are just a bit too weak for a gym battle. For Bugsy's first Pokemon, I'm thinking Pineco. At level 15 with the moves Take Down, Spikes, Self Destruct, and Pin Missile. The plan here is Pineco can set up Spikes early on and ideally self destruct after doing so. Next up is level 15 Yanma. Knowing Wing Attack, Leech Alive, Quick Attack, and Double Team. This guy is going to come out in out speed and either get a decent hit off or try to double team cheese. Definitely, it could be a pain if the player ends up being unlucky. And finally, the big dog Scyther's here at level 16 with the moves Fury Cutter, Quick Attack, Leer, and Focus Energy. I've not changed too much on this guy. After all, Scyther Gym 2 is already pretty tough, but Focus Energy has been added to help break walls. 
So Bugsy, I feel, would have been a lot better had he been Gym 3 and we could have used more evolved bug types. As it is, at the very least, his team members outside of Scyther can actually do something as opposed to Kakuna and Metapod. The third gym leader, Whitney, has only two Pokemon, a Metronome Clefairy and a Beefcake Miltank. I feel here the gym battler's Miltank put in 90% of the work, and Clefairy chimes in with a cheeky Metronome move every so often. Metronome Sacred Fire. Really? Metronome Transform. Metronome Swagger. And I'm dead. Incredible. So Clefairy is level 18 with Encore, Mimic, Double Slap, and Metronome. Miltank is level 20 with Stomp, Attract, Milk Drink, and Rollout. Clefairy really can't do much outside of Metronome. Miltank has four good moves, good stab and stomp, attract to troll, milk drink to never die, and roll out just to do absurd damage if it gets roll out three, four, or five. All while having a good stat distribution to make this moveset work. I'm fine with the Miltank, but this Clefairy is getting the boot. Also, let's give her three total Pokemon. The previous gyms had three, so why does Whitney get less? There's no shortage of normal types to pick from. However, I think a fun and interesting lead could be Smeargle. Whitney actually has a Smeargle in the manga, after being gifted it by DJ Mary. This Pokemon is able to learn almost every single move ever, used in competitive mainly as a Focus Sash lead using Spore and setting up hazards. While I think that'd be a bit much here, I think we could do something similar. At level 19, I'm thinking we give it Thunder Wave, Spikes, Body Slam, and Earthquake. The idea here is to start the battle statusing the trainer, and setting up a layer of spikes. You can only set up one layer in this generation. The Smeargle lives long enough, it has a nice stab move as well, and Earthquake for Ghastly and Rock types. Of course, this sounds OP, but with Smeargle's offensive stats, it'll feel more like a tackle and maybe a magnitude 5? <laughs> With the lead taken care of, next up we need a reliable Pokemon to come out next and take advantage of the setup Smeargle has hopefully given them. I'm thinking Furret would work well here. Not only is it a cute Pokemon to go with Whitney's aesthetic, but it has a wide amount of moves it can learn. It'll be level 19, and for moves let's give it Headbutt for Stab, as well as potentially comboing with Paralyzed Pokemon for nasty power flinching, with Fire, Ice, and Thunder Punch. While Furret's special stats aren't great, it is some decent super effective coverage, and it makes sense having them with the department store selling the TNs for those moves so close by. Finally, the Miltank. Honestly, I quite like how tough it can be. I don't think I'm going to change it at all. So here's Whitney's team. Three Pokemon all from Johto, each offering different strategy to them. And I'd like to think Smeargle at least gets a chance to set up before being one shot. Now it's time for young Mortimer, the ghost type big dog. He has a few problems. Firstly, his team composition is not great. He has a level 21 Ghastly with Lick, Spite, Mean Look, and Curse. A level 21 Haunter with Hypnosis, Curse, Mimic, and Nightshade. A level 23 Haunter with Spite, Mean Look, Mimic, and Nightshade. And finally, a level 25 Gengar with Shadow Ball, Mean Look, Hypnosis, and Dream Eater. Aside from the movesets being rubbish, why does Mortar use two Haunters? I love Haunter. It's my favorite Pokemon, but come on, Mortimer. What are you doing? Why don't you use a Mischievous? I'll tell you why. Because for some reason... The only new ghost type in this game cannot be caught until Mount Silver. Yeah, after you've beaten 16 gyms and are about to fight Red. You can catch Mistrevious at night time only. This really highlights some flaws with Gen 2. Why is that the place you can catch the one and only new ghost Pokemon? I don't know. Why not let Mistrevious be catchable at, say, the Burnt Tower? Thematically, I'd say it makes sense. Plus, Mistrevious wouldn't be outclassed completely at this point in the game. The tower is in Morty's town as well, so it would make even more sense. They cheated and gave Faulkner underleveled Pidgeotto, and Whitney's Meltank knows rollout at level 20 when it doesn't learn it until level 34. But Morty? Nah, let's slap on a Ghastly, two Haunters, and a Gengar. Seems like a good team comp to me. Okay, I'm done with that. Either way, Morty here is a bit of a struggle, since in Gen 2 there's literally only two ghost type lines, Gengars and Mistrevious. I'm of the belief that gym leaders and Elite Four champions, whatever, don't need to use the type that they specialize in. As long as the majority of their team is of that type, and the Pokemon that aren't of that type could sort of go with their theming. A good example of this is Aaron of the Sinnoh Elite Four's ace being Drapion. 
It's a poison dark type that looks like a scorpion, and it evolved from a bug type. Funnily enough, a bad example of this is also in Sinnoh's Elite Four, with Flint, the fire type specialist that had Steelix, Driftblim, and Lopunny. To be fair though, I looked through the Pokedex for Diamond and Pearl, and there weren't many other Pokemon that suited the fire type aesthetic. For Morty, I could see a few Pokemon fitting in decently. Maybe an Aridos with its creepiness, or a Stantler with its illusionary abilities, or we could cheekily slap on a dark type and say, close enough. Personally, I actually like the idea of Stantler here. In the anime, Stantler has used its abilities to create illusionary Stantlers to scare off people. Of course, these Stantlers aren't real and you can draw some similarities to them being ghost-like. Also, Morty is referred to the mystic seer of the future, and Stantler's horns are said to have a weird hypnotic quality to them. Rather in line with what Morty would look for in a Pokemon, I think. Now having laid that all out, let's go over Morty's team composition properly. Starting off with the lead slot, we have a level 23 Haunter. Unlike the original Haunters, this one is going to have actually decent moves. With Shadow Ball, Hidden Power, Psychic, Hypnosis and Thief. Shadow Ball being a strong stab option, despite Haunter having low attack, could still deal okay damage to neutral targets. Hidden Power feels appropriate to Morty to utilize given his aforementioned title, with Hypnosis to annoy and Thief to maybe catch a player off guard, swiping their held item until the end of the battle. Next up we have a level 24 Misdreavus with Shadow Ball, Psychic, Hidden Power, Electric and Confuse Ray. Hidden Power Electric can be a nice surprise for the Croconauts out there trying to bite down on Morty's ghosts. Psychic will be decently strong but with Misdreavus's mid special attack it shouldn't be too much to handle. After that, we've got a level 24 Stantler with the moves Headbutt, Bite, Reflect, and Light Screen. This will be able to hit everything aside from Steel types neutrally and can set up screens with its decent speed for itself or to aid Morty's Ace after it faints. Lastly, Morty's Ace, the level 25 Gengar. It'll know the moves Shadow Ball, Thunder Punch, Hypnosis, and Dream Eater. A fairly scary Ace that can get off fast hypnosis and powerful healing with a solid stab move and reliable coverage. Here you have it, Morty's team, but it actually uses the new Ghost type for this game, and a bit of a surprise pick with Stantler, each team member offering decent offense and decent utility. Chuck, 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 what the fuck? He has a team of two, a level 27 Primate with Leer, Rage, Karate Chop, and Fury Sipes. Yes, his moveset really is that bad and a level 30 Polyrath with Hypnosis, Mind Reader, Surf, and Dynamic Punch. Honestly, a bit interesting, but a bit whack as well. Chuck's team needs to be bumped up from 2 to 4 at least. We're at Gym 5. <laughs> Come on, big boy. A good lead, I think, would be the bulkyish ish on top, a pure fighting type to kick things off. It'll be level 28 with the moves Mac Punch, High Jump Kick, Dig, and Curse. Setting up with Curse will boost its lower defense stat, and while lowering its speed can be mitigated at least somewhat with Mac Punch. A jump kick is pretty strong stab, just hope it doesn't miss, and dig is good for any psychic types or ghost types that try to wall them. Next up, let's go for Primeape. While it was bad on the original team, I think it can be good considering it's the fastest fighting type in Gen 2. It'll be level 29 with low kick, rock slide, strength, and thunder punch. Low kick in Gen 2 is 50 base power, 90% accurate, and has a 30% chance to flinch. Completely different from how it is these days, where it does more damage based on the target's weight and cannot flinch. This will combo nicely with Primate's relatively high speed stat, Rock Slide for similar reasons as it can flinch for 30% of the time, as well as helping check cheeky flying types, strength for thematic reasonings with a gym, and the best option for psychic types. And finally Thunder Punch. I struggled a bit deciding Primate's last move. Primate has 60 special attack, so if Thunder Punch hits super effectively, it should do okay damage especially if the trainer is using something like Mantine or Gyarados. The third member for Chuck's team is a Heracross. At level 29, it'll have the moves Megahorn, yes I'm cheating a bit here, Endure, Reversal and Flail. This Heracross is a bit cheeky, we're incorporating moves it's too low level to use, Reversal isn't usually learned to level 44 and Megahorn at 54, and Flail is another egg move. Unfortunately, Heracross doesn't have the best moves at this gen, but the idea here is to nuke with Megahorn and or endure the hit, level 1 HP, and then use high power reversal and flails. For Chuck's ace, I think we can keep Polyrath at level 30 and give it the moves Surf, Psychic, Ice Punch, and Dynamic Punch. I thought Polyrath would get Cross Chop, but it turns out it couldn't, so we're kind of stuck with Dynamic Punch. 
Submission or Rock Smash were the other two options. Not great either or, so I figure, down out punch, let's do it for the banter. Its other moves offer special attack and coverage as well that fighting types of this gen really don't have much of. So all in all, Chuck's team has had a big upgrade, doubling his roster and actually incorporating the fighting types found in the generation. Jasmine has been another letdown gym leader, in my opinion. No gym trainers or puzzle, and her team feels like Bugsy again, with two weaklings and one solid ace. For her team, she has two identical level 30 Magnemites. Could have evolved by now, with the moves Thunderbolt, Supersonic, Sonic Boom, and Thunder Wave. And a level 35 Steelix with Iron Tail, Rock Throw, Sunny Day, and Screech. Okay, I understand Sunny Day helps with water weaknesses, but it just makes you weaker to the fire type. Really, it just seems like a waste of a move slot and a turn. Also, what's the deal with those Magnemites being a whole five levels below Steelix? Honestly, it's really weird team comp and I have no clue how they settled on this. Steel is new to Gen 2 with only Magnemite and Magneton being from Gen 1 that are now Steel type. Yet, they still find a way to make her team have the majority be from Kanto. Step 1, let's turn these Magnemites into a Magneton and bump them up to level 33. Give it the moves Thunder, Supersonic, Sonic Boom and Rain Dance. This Magneton is designed to set up Rain Dance and spam Thunders. Supersonic and Sonic Boom if there is a ground type, he doesn't have many other options. Here at least Rain Dance has some utility and if Magneton faints it will help out the next Pokemon. Following up is Fortress at level 34, with the moves Self Destruct, Spikes, Pin Missile and Strength. Unfortunately Fortress's stab options are dire, it doesn't even learn a steel move. Either way the main plan here is to set up Spikes and Self Destruct to force a KO and to utilise these Spikes. Well, I wonder how often the AI will forego that and just self-destruct right away. Next up we have Skarmory, a competitive menace that recently has been overshadowed by a certain other steel bird. Here in Gen 2 it's still decent. Luckily, unlike the other steel types, it gets usable steel stab. Skarmory will be level 34 with the moves Drill Pack, Steel Wing, Mud Slap and Agility. Drill Pack is a luxury move for flying types, but it's fairly standard. 8 base power, 100% accurate. Steel Wing is about as good as you'll get in Gen 2. 70 base power, 90% accurate with a 10% chance to raise the user's defense. Mud Slap is just a way to annoy opposing Steel types and make it look like Faulkner 2.0. With agility to patch up Skarmory's middling speed, after one turn it should outspeed anything the player has. Last but not least is the big dog, Steelix. A level 35 with the moves Iron Tail, Earthquake, Rock Slide and Curse. Iron Tail hits hard, but it only has 75% accuracy. Earthquake is the real move to click here, and can sort out those pesky fire types. Rock Slide is just a straight upgrade over Rock Throw, and Curse, if Steelix lives long enough, into an unbreakable physical wall that deals absurd damage. At least Jasmine team looks more threatening now. I imagine she was considered a bit of a weakling to the locals, considering she has nothing in her gym, and two Magnemites leading the charge. Shame that Steel types struggle with good Steel Stab for the most part. That's Game Freak for you. After all, Grass types, one of the starting types, never got a super solid stab move until Gen 4 and Energy Ball. Price, the teacher of winter's harshness. Yeah, not quite. So Price is Gym 7 and uses a level 27 seal. Why? Chuck, being Gym 5, leads with a level 27, but this is an evolved primate. So explain this one to me. Anyways, team consists of three Pokemon, a level 27 Seal with Headbutt, Icy Wind, Aurora Beam and Rest, a level 29 Dugong with Headbutt, Icy Wind, Aurora Beam and Rest again, and the Ace, a level 31 Piloswine with Icy Wind, Fury Attack, Mist and Blizzard. Guys, I never thought it was possible. Two Water Types and a Ground Type, but still no way to hit a Fire Type outside of Normal Type moves. Chuck had Surf, why didn't you Price? Also, Bro is using a seal at Gym 7 instead of an actual evolved Mon. You might just mistake him for a gym trainer first time round, especially since his ace is level 31. Lad would receive the beatdown of his life from Chuck. But no, this washed up Sea Dog is indeed the leader here, so let's make him look like one. Of course, we have to have a strong lead. Let's give this man a Deli Bird. Now hold up. Just look at this picture from the manga. Looks pretty scary, wouldn't you say? He's got a certain look in his eyes. That is unsettling to me. So let's make this guy level 34 with the moves Ice Beam, Fly, Mud Slap, and Thief. 
You gotta admit, this is a definitive upgrade over that seal. Good stab options, Thief for that surprise steal, and Mudslap for the Faulkner 0.5. Next up, let's go for Lapras, a bulky watered ice type, like Dugong except better, because it's based off the Loch Ness Monster and I'm Scottish. Also, it knows better moves and has higher BST. So, level 35 with the moves Surf, Ice Beam, Body Slam, and Rest. Here, the goal is to be a tank and rest up when on low health, dealing good stab damage and maybe get a lucky Body Slam paralyzed in the process. Next up, we have Jinx. Thematically, it goes well with Price having the Sailor look and Jinx can be the Maiden, waving his man off to... Less said about Price and Jinx's bond, the better, maybe. Jinx will be level 35 with the moves Psychic, Ice Beam, Icy Wind, and Lovely Kiss. Jinx is the resident fighting type counter. It also serves as a fast sleeper with the decently reliable Lovely Kiss. Icy Wind is there since not too many other moves would be useful for Jinx, and it can slow down the trainer's team a bit for Price's bulky team. Finally, the Ace, Piloswine at level 36 with the moves Earthquake, Icy Wind, Ancient Power, and Body Slam. A mix of utility and offense, mainly offense. Earthquake is always great. If Piloswine is lucky after one Icy Wind, it will outspeed. Ancient Power, if Price is feeling lucky to get the Omni Boost and really make the player sweat. Potentially turn the tides of the battle as well. And Body Slam is just for a decent neutral op option that can paralyze as well. With that, here's Price's team. At least now, he has a way to deal with Fire types, as well as a few other weak points like Fighting and Rock. Delibird is a bit of a silly pick, I must admit, but I couldn't help but include the little guy. So here we have it, the 8th gym leader of Johto, the big dog before going to face the Elite Four. She is the Dragon Master. What is her team? Three Dragonairs and a Kingdra. I know there are not many Dragon types, but yikes. The three Dragonairs are all level 37 with Slam, Thunder Wave, and Dragon Breath. Each one has either Surf, Thunderbolt, or Ice Beam. The Kingdra is level 40 with Surf, Dragon Breath, Smoke Screen, and Hyper Beam. While the Kingdra is decent, Fighting three Dragonairs at this point is a little underwhelming. I think we'll need to dip into using non-Dragon types here, something Lance knows all too well about doing. Let's begin with condensing these Dragonairs. First, let's have a level 39 Dragonair and give it the moves Dragon Breath, Fire Blast, Thunder Wave, and Light Screen. Dragon and Fire coverage means no Pokemon can resist both. Thunder Wave will hinder the player's Pokemon early on in the battle, and Light Screen just increases the team's tanking abilities. Dragon types are only weak to Dragon and Ice, both special moves, so it'll be a lot harder to take them out with no exploitable weaknesses. Next up, let's give her a Gyarados. Claire uses one in the anime, and Magikarps are found in the area behind the gym, in the Dragon's Den, so it makes sense as well. Make it level 39 and give it the moves Hyper Beam, Surf, Strength, and Fire Blast. Honestly, Gyarados' Gen 2 moveset is pretty bad. At the very least, Hyper Beam should do solid damage, and Fire Blast might be able to surprise a Pokemon that is weak to it. After that, I think we'll have to resort to giving Claire another Dragonair, this time more offensively leaning. At level 39 with the moves Dragon Breath, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, and Extreme Speed. Its stats aren't amazing, but I can't see it one-shotting much, but Stab Dragon with Bolt Beam means nothing can resist, and Extreme Speed is amazing priority coming off Dragonair's okay attack stats. Finally, her Kingdra, at level 40 with the moves Surf, Dragon Breath, Ice Beam, and Hydro Pump. Kingdra is meant to be a nuke here, Claire's final Pokemon is out for blood. With good coverage and Hydro Pump for power, it aims to take you out ASAP. Unfortunately, the Dragon situation is bad in Gen 2, so Claire's team can't be much bigger than this without looking like Lance, the flying type master. Still a definite improvement over her having three Dragonairs back to back, though. Well, that's all the Johto gym leaders. Maybe at some point, if this video goes down well, I could do the Elite Four, Champion, and Kanto gyms as well. If anybody has their own team compositions for these gyms, I'd love to hear about them in the comments below. I really enjoy improving aspects of Pokemon, like their boss battles, so this was a fun video to make. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe, it helps out a lot and lets me know I'm doing something right. I've got some more Pokemon videos in the works, so stay tuned for that. Hope you all have a good day.